Hello, today we're continuing with our GCSE Physics Revision series, now looking at cosmology, and we're going to start with the origin of the universe. Our universe is expanding. Everything is moving away from everything else. And if you take our position on Earth, if we look out and observe the universe, we see that everything in it is moving away from us. And the main evidence for this is the light that comes from the galaxies that we observe is what is called red shifted. And that is called the Doppler effect. I can explain that because you will have all observed it. When an ambulance comes down the road, as it's coming towards you, the pitch of the siren is much higher than when the ambulance passes you and goes away from you. So if I can do my impersonation of an ambulance, you will hear it go something like this. Of course, the actual pitch of the siren doesn't change at all. It's just that when it's coming towards you, the pitch is raised. When it goes away from you, the pitch is lowered. And that's for sound. For light, the pitch is equivalent to frequency. And so when something is moving towards you, light would be what's called blue shifted. If light is moving away from you, it's what's called red shifted. What do I mean by that? Well, as we shall see, the bulk of the material in stars is hydrogen. And hydrogen has a very specific spectrum. It's basically made of four visible light lines, red, green, blue, and violet. And you can see these um, in a laboratory, and you can see exactly where they are on the frequency um, spectrum. But if you compare uh, the lines that you get in a laboratory with the lines that you get from, say, some distant galaxy, what you'll find is you'll get exactly the same lines, but they have been shifted towards the red. They've been shifted in this direction. You still get four lines, but they're more over to the red side. That's called red shift. And the more those lines are shifted towards the red, the faster the object is travelling. Now, what has been observed by people like Hubble is, if this is the Earth, and on the Earth you have a spectrum that looks like this, one, two, three, four lines, that's a laboratory spectrum of hydrogen. If you had a galaxy here, then the spectrum might be like this. So it's been red shifted. But if you had another galaxy here, you find that it's even more red shifted. And remember, if it's more red shifted, it means it's traveling faster. So this galaxy is traveling faster than this galaxy. And the general principle that's been found is that the further away you are, the faster you're traveling. So very distant galaxies are receding, which means traveling away from us, at a faster rate than galaxies that are closer by. They're all receding, they're all moving away from us. It's just that the further away you are, the faster you travel. So we've established the principle that everything is moving away from us. Let's say we're here and we observe everything moving away. That's what we mean by an expanding universe. Things are just getting further away. But look, if the universe is expanding and it's this size today, then yesterday it must have been a bit smaller and tomorrow it will be a bit bigger. That's the concept of expansion. It was smaller yesterday, it'll be bigger um, tomorrow. So at some point in the past, the universe must have been much smaller. And if we project back, we eventually get to a point where the universe had no size at all. 
As time goes by, the universe is getting bigger and bigger and bigger till here, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger till now. And then in the future, it will get bigger still. But what happened here? That is what we call the Big Bang. And our best estimates are that it happened 13.7 billion years ago. Sometimes that number is rounded to 14 billion years. So our best estimate is 13.7 billion years ago, the whole universe was formed by some kind of explosion um, that created everything we now know. And since then, the objects in the universe have been flying apart and the universe has been ever increasing in size. Is the Big Bang Theory the only theory that exists? Well, no, it isn't. Um, there is a theory called the steady state. And I like to think of this as being in two forms. There's the old fashioned steady state. Now the old fashioned steady state said this, that the universe is fixed and unchanging. There are galaxies in the universe and they've always been there and they always will be there. Nothing changes. There's no point asking the question, how did it all start or where did it all come from? They've always just been there. The universe has always been, it always will be, it's fixed and it's unchanging. That's a kind of the old fashioned system. The problem of course is that we now know that the galaxies are all um, moving away from us. So there is expansion. So there's a new form of uh, the steady state system, which says, yes, it's perfectly true that the galaxies are moving away from one another, but as they move away, more galaxies are formed to fill the gaps. And so consequently, it appears that there's a steady state because as everything moves away and leaves a bigger gap, another galaxy forms so that you're constantly just seeing what appears to be a steady state. Do we have any e other evidence that might support this Big Bang? Well, yes, we do. The idea is that when the Big Bang happened, it would have produced equal amounts of matter and antimatter. Uh, because you can't generate one without the other, according to the theory. But when matter and antimatter meet, they annihilate and they produce very high energy electromagnetic waves called gamma rays. So, at the Big Bang, you get a huge amount of matter produced and a huge amount of antimatter. And then a fraction of a second later, the two meet and annihilate. Now, here is the difficult bit that somehow as a result of that annihilation, we were left with a remnant or a surplus, if you like, of matter, because that is what forms the entire universe. If it had all annihilated, there wouldn't be anything to form the substance of the universe. So somehow, but we don't know how, when this matter and antimatter annihilated, it left just a residue of matter, and it's that matter that forms the stars and the galaxies in the universe today. But it also formed, as I've said, huge numbers of gamma rays, which are very high energy electromagnetic radiation. And those gamma rays have had nowhere to go. They are still in the universe. So we ought to be able to observe them. Yes? Well, yes, but we've just got to consider one thing. You see, here are the gamma rays, which are very high frequency, very short wavelength, just after they were created after the Big Bang, when the matter and antimatter annihilated. But the universe in which they're traveling has expanded. And as it expands, it stretches the waves of the gamma rays. So that as time goes by, the wavelength increases and the frequency decreases until even longer time has gone by. And all the time time is going by, space is expanding and the uh, frequency of the radiation is decreasing 
and the wavelength is increasing. Until now, 13.7 billion years later, that high energy gamma radiation, which started out, is now in the microwave region. So actually the gamma rays have become microwaves simply because the expansion of space has stretched them and given them a much lower frequency, much higher wavelength. So when we look up, we don't expect to see huge numbers of gamma rays as a result of the matter, antimatter annihilation. By now we expect to see them as microwaves. Do we? Yes, we do. We see them as the cosmic microwave background radiation. And this has been discovered several years ago, but the idea is that everywhere you look, whatever way you point your telescope, you see a pretty much standard intensity of microwave background radiation coming from all points of the universe. And what this is, is simply the after effect of the matter-antimatter annihilation. The gamma rays that would, were produced when matter and antimatter annihilated are now microwaves. They're still, of course, in the universe because they've got nowhere else to go, and they therefore appear from all parts of the universe. So this is regarded as pretty good evidence of the Big Bang Theory. But of course, the Big Bang Theory still has a number of questions unanswered. Firstly, we've got the question of why is there a residue of matter after the annihilation? We don't know that. Next, we know that the universe is expanding, but the big force that operates on an astronomical scale is gravity. There are no other forces that we know of that would operate on a, 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 gravita on a cosmological scale. And gravity is an attractive force, so as the universe expands, you would expect that all the galaxies in the universe would be pulling on one another and that therefore the expansion would slow down. We would continue to expand, but the expansion would get slower and slower and slower. But what we are observing is that the expansion is accelerating. It's getting faster and faster and faster. It's almost like there's a thing called anti-gravity. It's almost like things are pushing the galaxies apart, whereas the only force we're aware of is gravity, which would tend to pull them together. And for that reason, scientists suspect that there might be some stuff called dark energy, which nobody has identified. We don't know what it is. We don't even know if it exists but it appears to be the reason that's causing the expansion to accelerate rather than slow down, which is what you would otherwise expect because of the gravitational effects. And of course, the other problem with the Big Bang Theory is we've got absolutely no idea what the cause was, what would have made that thing happen. We tend to think of it as an explosion. That's probably the wrong way of looking at it. What we think about when we talk about the Big Bang is that time and space were all created at the point of the Big Bang. And that there was nothing before that because there's no concept of being before that because if time starts when the Big Bang happens, then there's no such thing as before time. But you've still got the problem of, so what made it happen? So clearly there's a lot more work to be done.